I think we have a very close knit uh, family ties. Yeah, I definitely like the Filipino way. I, that's why I came back. I mean, you know, I could not live in America. I would never call America home. Filipinos are close to their families, but it's not quite as simple as they make it seem like in cinema. All people are close to their families. I, and I, I would like to speak up against that. I mean, I lived in Singapore and the Singaporeans are worse than us. They are so bloody clan. No, no, I think that's a human thing. I, 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 I do not now want to ascribe that to Philippines. <laughs> ang araw ng katwiran na sumisikat sa silanganan. Itinuturo. Sa mga matang malaong na bulagan ang landas na dapat tunguhin. Itinuturo ng katwiran magkaisang loob. Itinuturo ng katwiran magkaisang isip. Itinuturo ng katwiran magkaisa na maihanap ng lunas. Panahon na lumitaw ang liwanag. Panahon na lumitaw ang liwanag. Hello, I'm Bob Aves. I'm a Philippine jazz artist. Charles Fernier, musician and sound artist. I'm Bogey. Uh, I'm a visual artist. I like to sculpt, I like to paint, I like to do performance. There are advantages and disadvantages in both systems. I think it's largely a positive thing because there's a, a broader network to, to rely on. The thing about us is, again, it is better situated in, again, the economic situation. Because nga madaming agricultural na, no, that's, it's forced. We have family support for the rest of our lives. We count on them. Well, there's family politics, you know, there's, there's hurt feelings that are unspoken. The more industrialized we become, siyempre nag-iiba yung relasyon. Well, for the American side, let's say, because they move out early, they become independent. Sometimes they lose that they lose that kind of attachment with their parents, and that's and when their parents uh, reach an uh, elderly age, they end up in a housing elderly housing you know, facility rather than move in with them. You know, that will never happen here. I, I've been spared from that, but from from other families, I'm aware of it. It, it can be fairly damaging yung politics and you know relationships that what i would criticize is if that members of the family are not taught to be self sufficient that's i think where's the, where there's a problem when there are several members of the family that don't like to perform to their optimum and therefore burden their siblings which i think is unfair well, but that's only because that's the way we were all brought up. Parang you take care of yourself. Eventually, you can take care of your siblings. Yes, we are very close. My parents, among themselves, are also very close, and that tradition followed through with us. For my generation, we're, we don't talk about feelings. My parents, I, I don't remember, you know, sitting down and talking about what you feel, and. It's kind of more um, subliminal with us. There were eight of us siblings, and I'd say that we were pretty close because we were forced to stay four in a room. Eh. So talagang physically and psychologically close kami. Uh, like all siblings, we quarreled violently, but right now like we're really very close. And all of us are in the Philippines. That's interesting, wala sa amin nag-migrate. There's uh, six of us, and I'm the second. Music was appreciated in the family, but I was the only one who pursued it professionally. Yeah, we are a very close family. There's three of us. I'm the eldest, I have a sister, and then the youngest is a, a boy. My parents have always been proud of, of every one of us and supportive of what we did, but 
there was always this thing that you can't make money playing music or doing art. So you do that, we'll support you, but you should be thinking about a real career. Ironically, there are, I think, three of my siblings are psychologists. I think they studied psychology to figure out what went wrong. Then me, I'm the only one who went into fine arts. Ako lang talaga yung extreme. In fact, I think it, it was ano, because I always used to occupy the entire house with all my junk. And my siblings were somehow very tolerant. My mom had a very simple rule. Uh, she would allow us to be whatever we want. The important thing is we get a degree of that particular field, no? So when I showed interest in music, she encouraged me. I, I'm not sure I would have really become a musician if my dad didn't buy me my first couple of guitars. So yeah, their support was was crucial. This is a phenomenon of parents who are struggling with many children. They don't mind that one of them wanders off somewhere where they're safe. Eh? So in my case, I kept wandering off to my grandfather. More importantly, I would watch television with him. And sometimes we would watch art shows and he would start criticizing the work or discussing the work. Nagdo-drawing ako mula mga three or four. Nagdo-drawing talaga ako incessantly. So, ang ginagamit kong method is the old traditional method. Middle, highlight, shadow, and then finally high-high. Initially, my parents lived with my, with my grandparents. And so even then, I used to wander off into my grandfather's library because he was a book dealer. They did happen to have some big hardbound books uh, about world art, but more specifically, he had one about Caravaggio. At yun nga ang pang babysitting tool niya. Kasi pag malikot na ako, yan, basa ka muna dyan. And then the other one that is very distinct to me is the, the calling of St. Matthew. Yung the, the tax collector. Ang ganda nun. Ganyan ang books na nasa library niya. This is what... Whether he sold them or not, he was sent samples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Ah, napakawa. Mm -hmm. eh, but most of them are... Ito. These are the things that he used to have. Yeah, no? Prep to grade one. You know, we'd make texts. We'd make comics. Darat, ayan na, siyempre. Pandi Aviado is the first cousin of my father. My father was Felipe Aviado Ruiz, eh, so first cousin siya. And Pandi was a strong influence because my grandfather, who appreciated literature, was the only guy that would hang Pandi's paintings on his house. And I saw them as a very young boy and I said, Okay, yun na iba. In the flowers, in the landscape, Spanish style abstractions. That's really the purpose. That's really the purpose to keep the dust. Onofre Pagsanghan was organizing Dula Ang Sibol. What happened was, because I was hanging around in the art room at night, ako lang yung tao sa audience habang nagre-rehearsal sila ng lahat. So napapansin ni Pagsi, baka naman gusto mo sumali sa amin. O so, within the next sem, sali na ako sa Dula Ang Sibol. And then na-realize niya, oh, ikaw na rin tagagawa ng poster natin. <laughs> si Pagsi always did theater that had to do with idealism. Ano ba ang silbi ng buhay? And then eventually, ano ba ang direction ng buhay? Kasi eventually, you could wander into a world of formalism, which is where many artists like to stay. But si Onofre Pagsanghan introduced connection between art and idealism. I was a dean's lister in advertising. That means I got my tuition back. But I always did the work, parang three weeks to do it, last two days. Eh, parang na-realize na ko, sabi ko, masama ata ito eh. Pero kaya, kaya. In fairness, maganda ang grades ko talaga. And so, then this was the time that I was already beginning to meet the real, more focused guys like sila Egay Fernandez, Biboy de Lutavo. That's when I began to meet them and sabi ko, buti pa ito mga tango. Ito talagang, you know, wow, klaro. And so these were the crucial years and I said, yeah, I think maybe I'd like to take a painting. So I didn't tell anybody and I just shifted. And the shift here is that I did more work than I was expected to. If the professor gave us one plate to do, I'd do three or four. 
pinakamaaga akong pumasok, pinaalis ako ng gwardiya sa gabi. So, narealize ko, sabi ko, oh, mukhang ito talaga, eh. happy talaga ako dito. Eh. Although he did not like activists kasi. So, meron kaming laging stress. But he was a very consistent guy, Antonio Austria. Ipintan nyo lang yung nasa harapan nyo. Huwag nyo nang baguhin lahat. Marang ganun siya. Integrity naman yun. yun ganun naman, tunay naman yung paniniwala niya. And then, there was an American who stumbled into the Philippines and his name was George Bennett. I went to the Philippines and immediately got an assistant professor position because may MA siya. And he was immediately assigned to my graduating thesis class. Which, to my mind, I think was a revelation because he said, Why do you keep looking at the books for inspiration? Look at Espanya, sabi niya. I could do 10 years of work on just what I see in Espanya and you guys aren't paying attention. And when you hear it from a kano, papahiya ka nga kasi, oh nga, no? bakit nga ba tayo nag-aspire maging katulad nila? Siya mismo nagsasabi. Ito ang aming art supplies cabinet. <laughs> Lahat ng aming naiipon ng mga lumang styrofoam na maaring gamitin pang eskultura, mga lumang kahoy. Naniniwala kami na sayang lahat yan eh, hindi dapat yan tinatapon, maliban na na kung inaanay o bulok na. Pero talagang gagamitin namin yan at i-recycle namin yan at madami kami makikita nyo sa loob na ginagawa namin. I remember that in her nice way, my mother would say, ay, ang bang gumawa ng bulaklak? So my mother didn't like it being hung in the house that we inherited from our grandfather. Later on naman, when I won the AAP, sabi niya, hindi ka ba mag ng awarding? Hindi, kako. Atin tayo. My personality wants to be connected. Therefore, I do get an idiom that I think that you might mention, that you might know. And in fact, I like to refer to things that many people already know. I will twist it in a little way to show it In the way I see it, which I, it's always strange. To me, this is where, again, our specific history is so important. Because there is no other way to be original except to be true to the specifics of your history. Klarong klaro yun. When you are clear now of your specific path, you will realize, napako, that is where the word original comes from. From the origins of your specific history. Kung nag-originate siya, in other words, nag-unfold siya in a very specific way, iyon lang yun. Basta nagbibigyan ng pamagat eh. Wala pa. Pero, if you notice, puro sa, well, uh, wala, wala nga na eh, walang equivalent sa Tagalog, although ang equivalent natin, Bituka eh, salita ng Bituka. Mm -hmm. SR for me started also in 1976 or 77 when I saw the three-man show of the late Nick Risho, the late Papu Lainez, And the still going strong Adibayan Santos. Three man show yan sa sining kamaling. And when I saw the works of Adi, sabi ko, wow, yan ang, yan ang trabaho. That's, that's, the, that's to aspire for. He's doing that in times like this. Wow, astig. Marang. Yung mga paksa ng mga bagong trabaho come from very current issues doon. Mariano, Florida Bas, uh, ito nga yung aking pandango sa takip silim. Si Janet Lim na polis na suot niya lahat ng life jacket. Di ba? Suot niya lahat ng life jacket. Yun ang bestida niya. Lahat life jacket. Eh. Isa lang naman ang kailangan mo para mabuhay eh. Kaya rin sa kanya isang buong bestida. In other words, ganun na nga eh. Kung lahat tayo lulubog sa kawalan, ayaw na talagang lumubog eh. Nag-iba na yung worldview. That art had to show the social matrix feel ko ito talaga. And yun nga, then tinamaan na nga ako ng show ni Adi at that time. So, it's all beginning to gel. No? It's all beginning to gel. The, the, the final kicker is because we had not seen each other for a long time, in 1978, on my summer vacation, I take a boat to Dabao and I stay with Joey Ayala for a month. And he introduces me to kulturang atin. SR is is popularly construed to be and I say this popularly construed to be because this is how it is projected sometimes by people who want who want to look at it in a disparaging way it's construed to be like activist art 
But to me, what sustains me about it, it, it is the core of art, period. It's not about activism. In fact, ang feeling ko is all artists must be, in a way, an acti- have, have an activist mentality that you are committed to something deeply. Whether to beauty, to the exposition of injustice or to poverty, or even to just the exploration of form. That's where SR is. SR is you reflecting the matrix of your existence. So art is the imagination to live for. It defines idealism, it defines everything that you think that is good about humanity was first expressed in art. eh? Every time something comes, you got to put it down. Makakalimutan mo eh. You think, malinaw na malinaw ngayon, three days later, makakalimutan mo eh. Put it down. Kahit hindi mo gawin. That's why I always carry a ball pen. Ball pen ang best eh. Walang tasa tasa eh. Ball pen ang best. Put it down, put it down. Kasi, hindi naman, what I like to put down is the notion. The final thing, malayo pa. But the notion yung parang, saan na ako mag-uumpisa, what, what starts it from zero. Yan ang mahirap mga ano eh. Yan ang mahirap mag-combine. Pag hindi ka nag-i-imbak niyan, darating ang araw, mahubusan ka eh. But yet, when times are good, and especially when they're bad, there are even more that come. Diba? Yun, yun ang ano ko, yun ang last line ko dun sa huling ano ko. I'm, I am attracted to the decoratively, decoratively tragic. I can go to a passport application, tatlong oras ako nakaupo dun. I'm not bored. Kasi nag-iisip. Iniisip ako. Tapos titingin ako dun sa mga tao, may naiisip na ako. So, ganun. That's the process. I do not say I'll, I'll start today and start thinking. Hindi. Somehow, tumatakbo eh. Ang importante, makapahinga. Yun ang mahirap. Pag, hindi, pag kulang sa pahinga, para kang may jellyfish sa loob ng bao mo. No? Ganun, parang something is just not clicking. But when it's all good, good sleep, seen a nice, great movie, or watched, read a good book or something, or look at a great painting, ah, naku lalo. It was always a financial struggle, but I'd never had a problem with working. Uh, feeling ko, what the heck. Kahit konti kikitain, William ako. I used to have about three or four jobs. Eh. Rochit and I maybe would have 300 pesos in the bank and that would be okay. Until one fine day when she was growing older and she said, wala pa ba tayong anak? Manuel Galang, the elder brother of Mars Galang, who was then the art editor, assistant of the Straits Times. And they were on a recruiting binge. Nadiskubre nila, magagaling pa na talagang mag-illustrate ang mga Pinoy. So, napadpad sa kanya yung aking portfolio. And I got a letter. Sabi niya, based on your application, we would like to interview. Sabi ko, gano'n ako nag-apply? I never applied. Sabi ko, nanay, eto na eh. Eto na yung hanap buhay na baka sakali nga pwede na tayo mag-anak, etc., etc. You are always a minority naman siyempre. But, the thing that I did appreciate about Singapore is after a couple of months when I could show them what I could do, ano na sila? They treated me very fairly. One thing I admired about many of the Singaporeans I worked with was the sense of work discipline and the fact that they actually cooperated very well with one another. So many of the big things that they did were very cohesive. And then I did take advantage to learn everything I could. I, 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 try, I learned airbrushing and the use of all the films and you know whatever whatever technique they would allow because they could buy the materials. I aralin ko lahat because you realize nga na after six months I was already crying every day and every time I hear yung Madula Singapore na iyak na ako eh. What I tried to do when I was in Singapore is if I couldn't improve on the context of what I was doing, I was going to try to improve on the form. That's the way I tried to cope, mentally. Rochit actually got pregnant and that we had settled into a place. I started now to survey the territory for art supplies, art materials, where I could get junk. Basurero ako pag weekends, basta may mga tinatapon, hinahakot ko eh. I didn't really care eh. May dala-dala akong cart, kinakart ko pabalik sa apartment, babaklasin ko, gagawin ko art. <laughs> And I started to make for myself artworks that I had wanted to do outside of the office. In about a year of staying there, I 
stumbled upon the artist village, which was a group of people who had a commune outside of the sub of suburban Singapore, outside of town. And I really felt at home. Parang wow, nag light up talaga yung mundo ko suddenly. Wow, there was point staying here pala. I compared myself to that mental institution joke. You know, the mental institution joke, yung ripe. So sabi ko, parang, parang ganun na ako, ripe na ako, talaga malalaglag na ako, babaliw na rin ako. I've, I've had enough of it. Because whatever money I make, I have to pay a psychiatrist na. So uh, time to go home na, time to go home na. Masyado na, na. There's too much of it already. And sabi ko, we'll have to make do with whatever we burn. Sabi ko, klarong klaro, ito yung kota ng iipunin, tapos balik sa Pilipinas, for sure. No, other, no doubt. It was answering the, ano na, did we want to settle down and have a family? And that was what Singapore was to be. But to go to Singapore, to migrate to, ah, no, no way, no way. Nasa Pilipinas talaga, that's the thread. In my show nga, sabi ko nga, what do I consider my identity? My identity is something like about a 491-year continuum from the time that one can identify the pre-Hispanic settlers. In other words, that's the collective memory I carry in my head. Na parang dyan ako, naka, dyan ako nakakabit. Yan yung, yan yung ilog na paglangoy ko, doon ako pupunta. If you carry an identity that's very clear, then you will definitely function as a self-sufficient element of any community. What we, what we aspire to is to create an entire bigger community of self-sufficient people. And we will all have our conflicts, but we are all self-sufficient. Meron tayo lahat edukasyon. That's where all the education comes from, di ba? Mabubuhay kang sarili mo sa sarili mong puwersa, sarili mong kapangyarihan, sa sarili mong imahinasyon. And there, and then, yeah. So it's important. Thank you.